Alright guys, today you get to take a look at the Eldar Corsairs list with me. As you know, I'm a diehard Eldar player. I picked up my first Eldar army, I think, in 97, possibly 98. A lot of Metal Aspect Warriors. There was no Falcon Graf Tank. There was no Viper. All that stuff came later. In fact, there weren't any vehicles for Eldar, so... Hello! Alright, so Imperial Armor 11, Doom of Mimira, however you say that. First off, this is these books are outstanding. I think they run like 60 bucks from Forge World. And um, they are just absolutely glorious books. Uh, this one features Bran Redmaw, as well as the, uh, the Eldar and some kind of ice planet. I really haven't read that much. Uh, I got the Imperial Guard in here. Uh, so it's really fantastic. What interests me most is that uh, the Eldar, um, the Eldar Corsairs list is in here. So uh, uh, and apparently uh, the rumors coming out now is there's no Eldar or Tau this coming year, uh, which is a great disappointment for me. But quite frankly, I think I'm doing good with this. And I'm going to tell you all about the plans and maybe give you some insight into the army. They give you these three color schemes, Sky Raiders, which is kind of a pale blue with some uh, camo on it. Uh, Sunblitz Brotherhood, which is really quite a striking um, color scheme. Uh, a problem here is there's no real light-dark contrast. Uh, there's a warm-cold contrast. You have kind of this gray, sort of uh, khaki almost um, uh, for, for the weapons. Um, it really, and, but, uh, oh, and uh, Void Dragons, which is this uh, charcoal and, and red. Now, the thing with uh, Sky Raiders is, well, and in general, camo. Camo doesn't work on a guy that's this tall, typically, uh, because it all kind of blobs into one thing when they're on the table. So I, I usually don't rec recommend camo. I've decided to go with the Void Dragons color scheme. Uh, I am going to do variation on a theme, of course. I, d I don't like doing the standard thing, even though this really isn't standard. This just came out. Uh, but it's a, it's a charcoal with this very deep red and white. Uh, my plan is to do kind of this uh, energy type of stippling to make these dragon markings and introduce uh, orange and yellow on there because I really like this symbol, and I think that done very boldly on the hulls of the vehicles is going gonna, is gonna to look really good. So uh, let's take a look at the list. Uh, first off, I, I haven't really uh, looked at the HQs very much, so I'm just going to skip over that. Uh, basically, you get, have a Corsair Prince, and um, he really, um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I can't talk about him on the fly. Uh, he can have a retinue. There's also a Void Dreamer. Uh, quite, and this is a, uh, a Psyker, so they basically just have the two types of retinue. Uh, really, quite frankly, I'm just not impressed with this guy, uh, but of course I really don't know what I'm talking about. So, um, so, but he does get automatically the three powers. Um, one of them is uh, uh, allows a nearby unit to reroll a leadership test other than psychic powers. So, want want on that one. Uh, Spirit Shield. Um, is uh, basically against demons, so uh, and it also uh, nullifies hot hostile psychic powers uh, directed against a unit protected by the spirit shield. So this is just sad, really sad. Withering Radiance is a 12-inch uh, um, attack that um, has some kind of tricks to it. It's it's pretty good, uh, but the problem there is you got to be within 12 inches. To use it. So quite frankly, I'm giving an F minus to the uh, to the Void Dreamer just on first glance. Here's what's interesting to me. Let's skip over to troops because troops is really where you got to go to get to the good stuff here. So uh, the Corsairs, uh, they're nine points a model, and that's why I brought this in so we could look at Guardians because you use Guardian models, uh, but you get an upgrade kit from Forge World which gives them those little uh, dragonfly wing things. In fact, let me see if I can just find a picture of that in here. I think there was one back here that just wasn't very good. Oh, by the way, you can have shadow specters in this army, so not too bad. Um, still looking for... Oh, there it is. They have these things. There's little dragonfly wing doolies. And quite frankly, 
Uh, I think I'm just going to look around for a conversion. Um, <coughs> I'll talk more about that in a minute. All right, so back to uh, the Corsairs. They're nine points each. Let's compare them to just plain old Guardians. And you don't see Guardians because they're not... In fact, Eldar really don't have that many uh, good troops. So Guardians are eight points a model, and uh, Corsairs are nine points a model. Uh, the big thing that you get here is you get Ballistic Skill 4. And otherwise, the stat line is the same. But uh, plus one ballistic skill, that is well worth it. Uh, they can also take a Felark, which is like a unit champion, and he has leadership nine. Uh, whereas Guardians, even with a Warlock, can only have a maximum leadership eight. And so, um, but, so, and here's where the Corsairs shine, is they get a Laz Blaster, which is effectively a Storm Bolter, but uh, with only strength three. And they also carry a plasma grenades. Now, uh, it, and, and it keeps getting better. So they're in units of five to ten. Uh, for every five models, they can take a flamer or a fusion gun, so that's really nice. But for every five models, they have a second run of uh, weapons, a shuriken cannon or Eldar missile launcher. So you could, uh, technically in a unit of uh, ten guys, you could have four special weapons, and also the, the Felark, so half of them could have some kind of upgrade to them. And uh, the Felark um, can upgrade to a Power Sword and also have Haywire Grenades. Um, oh, and the whole unit can be given Corsair Jetpacks at 25 points, so you definitely want to max out on that and have 10 guys in there. Jetpacks are different than Jump Packs. They're the uh, things that uh, Tau uh, Crisis Suits have where they can... Uh, move six inches in the assault phase. So, quite frankly, that is really uh, combined with fleet gives them quite a bit of maneuverability. So, I'm liking them. Uh, if no packs, they can take a Venom or a Falcon, the Corsair Falcon. There is a typo with that, though, unless unless I'm reading it right. It says a Falcon can only be taken if it's six models or less. But if you look at Corsair Falcon, it says transport capacity ten models. So I'm really not sure what to make of that. Maybe someone can give me some insight there. Uh, I did want to look at the uh, Shuriken Cannon, because you can have two in a unit, and that could potentially give them a really nice um, maneuverability. She yeah, Shuriken Cannon is Strength 6, Assault 3, 24 inches, and it is, yes, it's an assault weapon. That is really the big, that's, that's the big news there is that, uh, oh, is Eldar Missile Launcher an assault weapon as well? That I would find pleasantly surprising. All right, Eldar Missile Launcher not an assault weapon, but qu quite frankly, I think um, five of these guys with a, with a missile launcher. But then you're just getting into a weapon platform range there. In fact, let's take a look at what the uh, weapon platform costs, because uh, to upgrade to a missile launcher is 15 points. And um, in the uh, Eldar book, let's look at Guardians. Um, it is um, plus 20 points to get a, a heavy weapon platform. So it is, uh, it is slightly cheaper, plus you could have 10 guys and have two uh, Eldar missile launchers. So uh, Corsair squads, I'm going to give them a really high rating. I think they, they, they really brought uh, the Guardian back. Up. And uh, quite frankly, I think in trade stock we have about a zillion of those things. So uh, that makes me happy. Uh, the other troops that you can have, oddly, uh, well, there's Corsair Jet Bike Squadron. Uh, at first glance, the only difference here is you can have a Philark, uh, but you can't have Warlocks. Uh, but the, you can have Corsair Wasps. Wasps are basically war walkers that have, um, they have uh, Wasp Jump Jets. Uh, which allows them to move 12 inches power boost instead of shooting. And, uh, yep, I think, oh, and they're also jetpack infantry <coughs> rather than walkers. Now, that is, that is very interesting. They're treated as jetpack infantry for purposes of movement. Oh, okay, great. I thought for a second that would make them not vehicles. Uh, so the problem here is these are not scoring units. But these guys are really quite fantastic. Uh, but they can't make an assault move after their special jetpack move. So 
there, there is that. All right, so um, that's, that's really the highlights. So when I'm doing the Studio Corsairs Army, oh yes, this is happening. I am going to uh, t have uh, four units of Corsairs. I'll probably start out with 20, uh, be able to split into fives or into two units of 10. So we'll, we'll start with that. And, uh, and then I'm going to have uh, start with one unit, probably move it up to two units of uh, Wasp War Walkers. Uh, so how many, how many points are we up to there? Uh, 20 to so 200, so probably 300 points for the Corsairs. And uh, you're looking at, with weapons, you're probably looking at about 600 points for the Walkers. So already we've got a good solid 900 points in our uh, troops choices. To, be to begin with though, probably only 600 points because I'm only going to take uh, three war uh, wasps instead of six. Uh, I'm going to build probably build this army in two different waves. All right, um, quite frankly, I do like the Falcon as a transport. Uh, you give uh, the Falcon hollow field and that makes this thing nigh unto unkillable. I think I did the math once. It more or less makes it the equivalent of uh, armor 14. And here's why. Because for destroyability, well, hollow field means if you get a uh, damage roll on it, you roll two dice and you take the lowest one. So that means uh, if you get, say, a penetrating hit, uh, normally you need a five up to wreck it. Well, if with hollow field, you need to to roll two dice and both of them need to be five ups. So it changes it from a one in three chance to a one in nine chance. And uh, that really makes these very, 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 very tough to kill, especially since they have one, two, three weapon systems. So uh, these guys are not bad, but they are pretty pricey with the holo field that brings it up to, uh, to 165. So Corsair Venom, uh, this, this is the comparison I wanted to make. A Corsair Venom is 45 points, but it, and it has transport. It's like the Dark Eldar Venom, except, and here's the big thing, it does not have a flicker field. So I want to just look at the uh, Venom. Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the um, Corsair Venom as opposed to the Dark Eldar Venom. They are um, pretty much straight across. This one has uh, Shuriken Cannon and Twin Link Shuriken Catapults. And this one has a twin link splinter rifle and a splinter cannon. So similar there, the splinter cannon probably is better than a um, shuriken cannon. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of critical items here. One, this is heavy six, and a shuriken cannon I believe is heavy four. Let's uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, I really hold on. I can find this. This book is so old. It's like 10 years old. Uh, Shuriken Cannon is Assault 3. So three shots as opposed to six shots. That is a big, big, big difference. Uh, it, it really makes me sad inside. Uh, but Strength 6 can go up against vehicles. So that's the advantage of the uh, Corsair Venom. But the thing is, you can't, unlike this Venom, the Dark Eldar Venom, you can't get two Splinter Cannon equivalents. You can only replace the Shuriken Cannon uh, with something else. So quite frankly, I think the Corsair Venom, even though it's 10 points cheaper, once you drop the uh, Flicker Field and the fact that it can't double up on its weapons, uh, you end up with not a good uh, option there. Uh, so Hornets, Hornets, uh, let's see if I can just find a picture of one real quick. Hornets make me happy inside because they look cool. That's what a hornet looks like. And it's it's probably mid, this is actual, or relative size. Yeah, it's not actual size, obviously. Uh, but a hornet is a little bit smaller than a falcon. And uh, the hornets are squadrons of one to three. Uh, they come auto with uh, star engines, which is nice. Uh, but it uh, But they have two weapon systems that can fire independently. They don't become twin-linked, and that's a, that's a pretty big deal. But quite frankly, they are, <coughs> excuse me, very, um, very expensive. So if you put two pulse lasers on there, which is what they're pictured with, uh, that now becomes a 125-point model. And quite frankly, at uh, 11, uh, 11 armor, that becomes not 
that good. But I'm going to include some because they look good. Fast Tech also includes Nightwing Inter Interceptor, a Night Spinner, normally a heavy support choice. Uh, so quite frankly, I'll do the, what uh, some of you may remember as the, uh, the Quad uh, Eldar vehicles where you buy a Fire Prism kit, make it into a Fire Prism, you make it into a Night Spinner, um, you can make it into a Falcon by using the two turret points because uh, that kit is, the, the Fire Prism kit is just looks so amazingly cooler. Um, and you can also make a Wave Serpent. Uh, oddly, Wave Serpents are notably absent from this, uh, from this list. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really don't know. I would, I would have to try it out. I'm not sure how good Night Spinners uh, are, really. But really, I'm, I'm making this as a fun army. I believe it'll have a much, quite a competitive edge. Um, most places do allow um, the Forge World lists. And in fact, I think Forge World has been making them official, saying these can be played just like any other list. Uh, but quite frankly, I don't know if that's the case here. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's kind of a risk you take with that. Um, you know, will it be allowed, so to speak? Um, Apocalypse, Warhammer, okay. Classifying the entries in this book. So there you go. Is it Apocalypse, Apocalypse Formation, or is it usable for standard games of 40K? As with all our models, these should be considered official, but owing to the fact that they may be unknown to your opponent, it's best to make sure they are happy to play a game using Forge or models before you start. Yeah, I think most tournaments are going to allow that. Quite frankly, I don't see that symbol anywhere in here. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's go back to... They do show you some... Oh, there you go. Brand Red Maw is for 40k. Uh, Eldar gives uh, some new units here. Uh, Shadow Spectres are for 40k. So, I say good on you. Um, <clears throat> Warp Hunter. Nothing but good things about the Warp Hunter. And you know how I know? Because people order them from us. Uh, typically, you're seeing one to three Warp Hunters in a lot of uh, Eldar armies. All right, so uh, Heavy Support only has two, uh, three entries. Uh, Corsair Firestorm, uh, which is uh, triple, um, what are those called? Oh, flip, I can do this. It is uh, fire, oh, scatter lasers, triple, triple scatter lasers. Uh, so that's, that's really not too bad. <clears throat> um, Although it is strength six, so you're not quite into uh, auto cannon territory there. Uh, but in in the studio army, gonna put in a warp hunter, the phoenix bomber, uh, at 225 points. Yikes, armor 10. But but it does have. Are you ready for this? The chasing shadows rule, which is the phoenix counts as being equipped with an Eldar Titan holo field, and quite frankly. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty good. And it's got some hitting power with uh, two Phoenix missile launchers, a pulse laser, and two shuriken cannons with anti-aircraft mounts. So quite frankly, I think I might just need to get a Phoenix, a Warp Hunter to start. That'll fill up two of the slots. <clears throat> um, definitely getting a squadron of Hornets, probably just two to start with. Uh, no Nightwing yet. Um, and then the other stuff that I talked about uh, with a couple HQs is going to come up to right around um, 2,000 points. Uh, did want to talk about this first. You can have Craft Room Elcast. That means as an, as an elite choice in the Corsairs list, you can plug in an elite from Codex Eldar or uh, a fast attack from Co Codex Eldar. Now, as most of you may know, the fast attack section of Codex Eldar is pretty thin. No, you know, no, sh no sh shining stars there. Warp spiders, shining spears, swooping hops and hawks and viper squadrons. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, just take a look at a viper compared to a hornet. Viper is 45, a hornet is 65. Hornet not open top, scout, area assault, star engines, um, but the, the weapons are pretty spendy, but at least it has those weapons, right? So, uh, quite frankly, gotta say the Hornet wins out there. But Elites in the Eldar book are actually quite fantastic. 
uh, striking scorpions, fire dragons. Probably not going to need fire dragons with all the fusion guns that can come in the Corsair squads. Um, howling banshees or harlequins. So that's really quite a toughie. I, I would almost take Wraithguard uh, as the elite's choice, but you know, I, I really have to think that through a little bit better. What the Corsairs are missing is any kind of close combat. Uh, so, yeah, that's really a tough call. But uh, getting back to elites, which I didn't talk about, they can have Kabbalite warriors and, uh, and with Venoms. So, and Venoms from the Dark Eldar book. So, there's that. Um, what, but the interesting uh, elites choice here is a Void Storm squad. These guys are 12 points a model, but they, they come with jetpacks, so basically they're the same cost as a regular Corsairs. But here's the kicker. The Void Storms guys have a Shimmer Shield that is a 5-up in Voln save, and they have Plasma Grenades and Pistol Close Combat Weapon. Quite frankly, I think these guys are fantastic, especially since 1 in 3 can have uh, a special weapon, so they can have 3 fusion guns. Quite frankly, I would put these guys on par with Kabbalite Trueborn. In fact, before I stick my foot in my mouth, yeah, Kabbalite Trueborn are 12 points a model. The big leg up these guys have is that Shimmer Shield. That is really, really super. Up to 4 can get special weapons for Kabbalite Trueborn. Uh, for the Corsairs, uh, only three, uh, but I don't think that puts them that far behind. And uh, these guys are these are fantastic with the uh, jetpacks. So yeah, they have shimmer shields and jetpacks. So quite frankly, these guys toe to toe with uh, with Trueborn in my in my book. So anyway, well that's been my fairly uh, possibly overly long analysis of the Corsairs. Uh, list. I'm a diehard Eldar player. I think I've had six Eldar armies over the years. And uh, this one is definitely going to be uh, really, really different, and I'm excited to move ahead with it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Got your inspiration for the day. Mm. Oh, and by the way, yes, I'm going to make this pitch every single time. Uh, let me know if you want to commission an Eldar or Eldar Corsairs army. I would be quite excited to do one. We have um, uh, standardized rates for almost everything. And uh, just send in an inquiry. It really can't hurt to ask. And I can send you some general information to start. Uh, as you may uh, have heard in previous videos, I am caught up, which is unusual. So I'm just sitting around making videos all day long. <laughs>